Welcome back to the Roundtable, I'm Retro Nemo, and today we have another Gumball Breakdown. This episode, we're talking about the vegging. Gumball and Darwin are sick and tired of constant action in their lives, so they decide to dedicate an entire day to doing nothing and simply vegging out on the couch. However, it seems they can't even do that, as their simple lazy day keeps getting interrupted by increasingly crazier scenarios. It climaxes when the duo is forced to save their whole family from falling off of a broken highway, but honestly, this happens too much in the show. But did you catch all the references and hidden easter eggs in this episode? Probably not. I spent a lot of time watching this episode to find these, so I, I highly doubt that you did. I mean, hopefully you didn't, otherwise you have no reason to watch this video, so I guess we'll just get started. Let's start off with the very first scene in the episode with Gumball and Darwin first waking up. It seems they've got some real Nintendo fans in the art department, because if you take a closer look under the bed, you'll find what appears to be a gaming system. A gaming system that looks surprisingly close to the 2007 Nintendo Wii. Just a classic for just gaming all around. If that wasn't enough, later on in the episode, when Gumball and Darwin are on the couch. Gumball slides a gaming cartridge into a system that bears a striking resemblance to the old SNES and NES lines. All we need now is for Gumball to own a Switch, and we'll know for a fact that there's a brand deal going on in the background here. This next reference is a little obvious. When Gumball and Darwin try to block out the phone ringing, they're met with a member of SNASA who warns them of an asteroid heading straight to Elmore. This is obviously a reference to the space corporation NASA, which if you don't know, is the government corporation that got us to the moon and isn't run by Elon Musk. This is just Gumball's way of avoiding NASA's lawyers. While Gumbo and Darwin are trying desperately to ignore all the crazy scenarios going on around them, there's a brief second where they flash into a clean white room filled with old cloaked figures. Fans of the Star Wars franchise, or basically any human being, because everyone knows what Star Wars is, might recognize this as the Jedi Council War Room. This one's pretty obvious and the first of many movie references in the episode. Just make sure to look out for Gumball and Darwin in the next Star Wars movie. Hey, remember that time Donald Trump was in Gumball? Or, I'm sorry, the mayor of Elmore, but come on guys, this is so obviously the president. Look at that face. Look at that smug face. Ooh, actually, zoom out. That's starting to scare me. During the height of the insanity, Gumball and Darwin are suddenly joined by an old Japanese man. Though this man is definitely off, as he sports a traditional Japanese schoolgirl outfit that bears a striking resemblance to the anime Sailor Moon. Not sure why, I'm just, just gonna move on. This one's real quick, but I uh, just want to point out that they have some knockoff cola, stylus with a K on the ground. Looks like the Watersons have to stoop for the bargain brand sometimes, though we definitely know they're not Pepsi fans. Gumball is known for clever callbacks. It's just part of the show, and this episode isn't any different. When Gumball reaches for the remote, a plethora of crazy things happen in the window outside in the background. At one point, the entire world falls back flat to reveal the Void, a place introduced in earlier episodes where all forgotten things go. They managed to escape but forgot about the whole thing because their little tinfoil hats were sucked into the Void with them. They ended it there seemingly for good, but this callback's kind of a fun little way to let viewers know that there is continuity in the series. When Gumball answers the phone later in the episode, he receives a call from a scary sounding voice asking him to play a game. This is a not so subtle reference to the Saw franchise, with the phrase serving as the catchphrase for the series main antagonist and basically mascot, Jigsaw. Jigsaw is a serial killer who tortures his victims in cruel and unusual ways before killing them. Why he's calling a blue cat and his walking fish friend is beyond me. Not stopping there, it seems like Gumball loves movie references. There's a point in the episode where the TV flips on its side and a creepy long haired bony figure comes out of it. This is a direct reference to the popular movie The Ring. In the film, whoever watches a cursed VHS tape is eventually killed a number of days later by a little girl who actually climbed out of their TV a la this scene. The girl's super scary, this figure's super scary, they look exactly the same, but I never thought it'd have a spot in Gumball. The box the long-haired monster gives Gumball could be a reference to the movie 7 and the famous what's in the box scene. It does ask them if they want to know what's in the box, which is a infamous quote from the movie. This is definitely the biggest easter egg in the episode. Gumball is flipping through channels and for a brief second we see a game show a la Wheel of Fortune in the background. The puzzle, if solved, reveals a giant spoiler. The board reads, when solved, the show ends at season blank. Hmm, what can they mean by that? Well, if you look at the counter, it actually stops at the number six, leading some people, including Officer Vox himself, to think this is a clue that the show is ending at season six. This isn't confirmed, however, the team has said that the show is definitely ending, and they know when it will. However, the specific date is not been confirmed yet, so it seems that this is our only clue. Seeing that Gumball is currently on its sixth season, and the fact that the creator himself hinges to this being its last, it's sad, but a fair bet. We have a whole theory on this, you should check it out. Small plug here, link in bio. It's well known everywhere that Larry holds every job in Elmore. When he quit, the whole town fell apart for crying out loud. So when Gumball and Darwin order burritos, Larry is the one who delivers it, further sticking to this whole stigma of him working every job in the town. Even more interesting is the delivery bike he rides looks a lot like the pizza delivery bike Richard rode in the episode The Job. Maybe it's all the same company. Do I smell a conspiracy here? On Banana Joe's desk, there's a 
figure who's pretty swole, I might say. This dude's hung, as the kids are saying. If you look a little closer, you might see a resemblance to the classic He-Man action figures. Maybe it's worth something. The Watterson family has tough luck with highways. Well, specifically this highway that always seems to be broken. Like, I'm talking, it just randomly ends. It's hard to keep track of all the times it's appeared in the show, as they've encountered it so many specific times, but these past episodes include the copycats along with many others. And finally, this old man is definitely a busy guy. Not only is he on the game show earlier in this episode, which is my favorite easter egg in the episode, he's also seen later driving on the highway, so he gets around. Well, there you go guys, those were some easter eggs, references, and secrets you might have missed in the Gumball episode of The Vegging. Is there anything we missed? Probably. If so, let us know in the comments down below. As always, if you like the video, leave it a like and subscribe to The Roundtable for more great cartoon content. As always, I'm Retro Nemo, this is a Gumball Breakdown, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.